Hey, Shibi Doodlers, how are you doing? Well, last week I went to Chirk Castle and uh, and I met uh, Inti and Polly, these two uh, f fabulous Dalmatians. And inside, in the cafe, they had uh, a great big salmon stuck up on the wall, which had been caught by Lord Thingamajig. So I, I, I did this little sketch, and oh, and this unicorn as well. But anyway, and I don't know what the squid have to do with it. And then I thought, why not do how to draw an Atlantic salmon? But let's not talk about it. <laughs> let's do it. Atlantic salmon is a, an amazingly um, streamlined shape. So we want this curve. We need to leave some space here for the tail. I'm going to bring that actually down a little bit like that. So we want to have the kind of the tail about there. If we're kind of thinking along the uh, kind of lateral line kind of thing there, then I'm going to make that just slightly shallow and bring it to about there, I think. So we've got room for the tail just about. I might have to zoom out. So we want to slightly curve that and in there and it's just sort of just slightly curving in a bit on the tail and then we want a similar kind of curve coming the other way like that and then we want to sort of come around there straight across and down and it almost kind of looks like a little fin that bit on the mouth there and then the mouth will come forwards into this little nerf. <laughs> what else you'd call it. And we really want to keep this nice streamlined shape. And then we've got a kind of a line coming around into sort of the gills. Around like that. And then you're going to want the eye around about there. Then we're going to want the dorsal fin. No, I'm not an expert on fish anatomy. So that's going to be kind of something like that. And then that's the mm, dorsal dorsal fin. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there'll be somebody screaming at the screen at the moment. It's a, it's a thingy. What's it? <laughs> um, okay, I just looked it up. This is an adipose fin. <laughs> the gill cover is actually the operculum. And then we need, this is the pectoral fin. And then these are the pelvic fins. So they want to be coming down kind of like that. And then we have the anal fin. I'm sorry about that. So what we've got going on here, in fact, is we want a bit of a, um, so we've got the adipose fin. I'm going to move that just slightly. And then this will just sort of, just sort of come down a little bit there. And then with the anal fin here, this is sort of coming, it's sort of coming up a little bit, and then you're gonna get a kind of a line coming through there. And then the anal fin will be kind of cu cutting in there like that. That's looking about right. And then we want to get this nice and even. So we'll bring that, oh, bring that in a little bit there. And then we're going to want to have a kind of a, a curve there. We're not going to draw that. That's something we're drawing to. So I'm going to start with this grey long curve. Um, I think I might actually take that up there like that. And bring that along here like that. And then this is going to be this the adipose fin so you learn something new it's every day is a school day and that's gonna just curve down in slight sort of s shape there um, and then we can just kind of bring that in there and then we're going to want to kind of bring that up there like that now let's come around the corner here and then down into this funny little kind of leafy shaped lip kind of thing there and we've got another little bit there and the eye and I'm going to put a, a circle inside it and almost shade it all in except leave a dot for the kind of the shininess and then this can come to there and then 
I think these it's it's tricky when you're doing fins because they kind of flip backwards and forwards so it depends which way you're kind of looking at them really and then this wants to be what did I call these things this is the operculum <laughs> so I think this is the main one around the back isn't it? Like that. I think you kind of learn a little bit each time as an illustrator <laughs> I think you get asked to draw all sorts of things and uh, and each time you you learn a little bit about a lot of different things and you have to have this kind of I think an illustrator needs a slightly inquiring mind and, and to be interested in things um, to, to get things right or to get enough right anyway so I'm going to bring that kind of down there like that and then um, I'm going to bring that, that that way just kind of dot dot it away like that and then this can go there and we can bring those fins in there like that and then we want a similar thing going on here so it's going to be slightly curved down to there and then it's quite sharp around the corner and just kind of slightly curved in there and then we're going to want to have lines coming into this space so if you're going to halve it halve that area and then you can kind of halve it again and halve it again like that and that will get your curves and angles about right like that oh now because I like drawing in pen I'm going to do the scales in ink and what I'm going to do is to really get this kind of get a, this curve so this is going to be the sort of the shine line which also kind of comes around about where the lateral line is and I'm going to start putting in these scales and I'm doing them it's just slightly curving and I'm stopping when I get to the top line and this is going to be really really difficult and requires a bit of concentration and I have a feeling I'm going the wrong way already but I feel I'm doing the curve in the wrong direction but I think it's right so I'll just kind of zip through these and now we need to carry on on the other side so this is kind of taking up the shininess this is giving that shiny kind of midline and I'm just still trying to keep this curve and I'm trying to keep a similar width but I'm not going all the way to the bottom because we've got this very pale tummy where you're not really going to see the scales too obviously and that will also help to give that kind of feeling of curvature too as well and I think you can maybe take more care here to really kind of get those lines sort of flowing through and to get them going the other way I'm going to turn the paper to, to be able to get the, the curve of my arm so it's sort of like a compass that's swinging from the wrist here so what I'm going to do is work my way down the body so we've got the curve going the other way like that and stopping when I get to that line there too and I'm going to zoom through this so I can concentrate and here again then I'm going to do these kind of curving lines but stopping round about here so that we get that feel of the paleness of the tummy and, and also you can see the line as I'm sort of flicking it in a curve it starts thicker here and it kind of gets thinner towards the end so you get that kind of graduated graded tonality as well in the line there so that you can see immediately you've got this kind of shininess across the middle oh it's swimming <laughs> Now when you are absolutely sure that the ink is dry then you can erase those pencil lines and if you didn't press too hard in the first place <laughs> then that's going to be an easy thing to do. If you really dug it in there you're going to have trouble. And I think I, and I'm going to paint this just really really simply. I think unless you are a, um, a kind of technical wildlife illustrator then you can you can pretty much paint this whatever colour you like I think. <laughs> Um, so I want to kind of leave this strip of pale down the middle um, and I'm just going to kind of bring in oh I don't know I'm just trying anything really and bringing in some blue so wh what colour are they really <laughs> when you see them mounted on um, 
get on a board like that having been caught they're usually a kind of a browny kind of colour aren't they with a maybe I don't think I'm going to add a bit of pinky purple into that and and then we're kind of I'm going to add a little bit of Naples yellow down at the bottom just so I've got a kind of a bit of warmth to bring in there to drop it down to pretty much white at the bottom I think I'm just making this up <laughs> they're not green at all what am I doing <laughs> so so while it's wet I can still keep dropping stuff in and what I want is kind of along the top here it to be quite much darker but also the very top edge I want to be fairly light because we got kind of light reflecting up there and then I'm just kind of oh, I'm just trying anything really um, and I got a whole lot of images from you know, Google images open and they're all entirely different <laughs> and some of them are some of them are drawn you know some of them are illustrated some of them are photographs some of them are bad photographs and it's a really difficult thing so I suppose it's really what you're after um, if you're after something very very um, you know technically correct or what so I'm putting kind of Naples yellow at the tips again I'm probably going to put some in there just to get a bit of kind of warmth but that's just a, a kind of a base colour really to um, uh, and then we're going to make that a bit kind of darker there I think and then add a bit of darkness in there we probably want a little bit of sort of darkness in there to get this feeling of this sort of well I suppose if that's the anal gland it's the anus isn't it really I suppose <laughs> so sorry if you're having your breakfast at the moment and then I think we'll bring that a bit darker so you this is sort of playing with it wet on wet and while it's wet you can still push paint around and um, this looks absolutely nothing like a, an Atlantic salmon at all it's got none of the, <laughs> none of the proper colouring in there I don't think at all um, I'm going to make that a bit darker around here um, and maybe just kind of around the eyes. I'm not using watercolour paper. This is, um, I'm using sea white cartridge paper. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> just seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, it might be an awful lot easier to, to paint if I had watercolour paper. So I'm just kind of putting, a, trying to give a hint of, I'm making it up, I really am. I'm trying to give a hint of the um, this gill opening here as being sort of casting a shadow behind it there and then we might need a little bit of shadow in there as well and then this wants to be darker up there as well and then we want to kind of darken up the tail a bit and then I'm going to add some more kind of sort of streaky lines in there and a bit more kind of shaping to these fins like that uh, and I'm going to add a little bit of, kind of yellowness into the eye and then a little bit of burnt umber up on the top there just to give it a kind of a, a curvature and then I think what we really need is to have some spots. I'm using neutral tint here. I never use black. I, I often talk about that. Um, I think if you have black in your palette, it's just going to encourage you to make everything really, really, really dirty. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just going to put lots of little spots all over it, really. And I think what it is, is the, um, I don't know, I keep saying it, the thing about watercolour is, and I suppose I just <laughs> have to keep repeating it, for, forgive me if I've said it 200 times before, 
is the difference with watercolour is that the light is coming through from the paper. The paper is the light and it's shining through these transparent glazes that you're putting over the top. It's very different to painting with acrylics or, or oil paints where the colour is in the paint and you're adding colour on. You're building up with colour whereas here you are you're reducing the light as it were so you've got the brightness of the light that's as bright as it's ever going to be is the brightness of the paper and then you're kind of reducing it but it's like a transparency and the light is shining through and um, so I put too many spots down below because I was talking to you uh, <laughs> there'll be lots of people complaining that no, they don't look like that hmm <laughs> so it's 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 a building up with watercolor and you know, if you go straight in with the dark colour, it's just going to be too much. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to. I think I might try and do some extra kind of little bits. I'm doing blue, very pale blue, and just kind of adding to the. I'm just kind of adding to the scales. Really, it just seemed like a good idea because. I'm wanting to kind of build up a bit of bit more shade up around here, so I think I'm going to do that with a bit more of a darker hue. I should say it's not shade, so I'm just going to do that with little strokes following the the line of the. Yeah, it's a bit darker, isn't it? There we go. Good, and then I'll dry that, and I feel I want that to actually kind of extend along here as well and make that a bit darker on the top here. I'll clean my brush. I'm using a water brush so um, the water's in the handle and the, it just keeps sort of pouring down and so the colour's getting thinner all the time as, until you load the brush up again. And then I'll do another little sort of stabbing row coming down the other way. So I'm adding another layer of transparency on top. So each layer then makes it slightly darker. And so you build up the layers of of colour and transparency. I'm thinking I might want a little bit more come along there. And then I'm thinking we may have some silt on the ground here and then maybe some kind of weeds to give a feeling of the flow of the river going that way and I'm going to use Naples yellow down on the bottom here to get a really kind of sandy <laughs> sandy bottom get that really kind of nice and warm and then maybe we can kind of drop a few colors in I find greens that come straight out of the um, greens that come straight out of the pan or the tube never quite right you really need to mix them in fact I've, I find that with most colors I think that they're, <laughs> they're there to be mixed um, I think very rarely do I a uh, Naples yellow I will use quite often straight straight down like I did um, and that just gives me that kind of warm creamy color but then uh, you know I'm adding these bits to it as well aren't I so sort of shade to differentiate the the depth and level. Things are very very rarely just one colour all the way through because you have sort of tones and hues and variations and gradations and whatever. And I'm dripping water into there from my water brush to thin it down. So that's a really nice kind of turquoisey kind of colour I've got there. And I'm just going to <laughs> swoosh some of this about uh -huh. and it's very much using kind of the side of the brush and I've been using the this water brush for a few years now and I really kind of got, got to like it uh, not the same one they do work uh, they're not indestructible so you have to buy a new one every now and then but they're not that expensive and so you can get really really fine lines with it but you get these big broad 
sweeping brush strokes as well. And I'm not bothering about trying to get a really, really smooth tone of colour in there. Because I want to get kind of feeling of a hint of sort of movement of water. So, so I'm thinking this is salmon that's just sort of coming in from the Atlantic. And uh, just sort of reaching, just reaching the fresh water, I suppose. Uh, and then we're going to want some kind of, sort of movement lines. I'm going to make that slightly darker there to let that sort of stand out a bit there. And then I'm kind of adding a bit of blue and green and making it just try to stand out a little bit more. So I suppose I'm kind of adding streamline lines. Oh, I'm just having fun, basically. I was talking to. Pat, who's one of my patrons yesterday, <laughs> talking about um, what, uh, why people draw and paint, and she was saying, oh, she just gets lost in it. And and I think if I wasn't talking to you on this video, I would be lost in it too. But like my brain is working in two different planes, so it's working on, you know, how to do this painting, just having fun with that. But I'm also having to think about talking to you and explaining, trying to explain what I'm doing. And I think I think I'm add a little bit of green to that to make it a bit more. And I think I'm going to do a big sort of some swooshy kind of I'll just make that get up to the fish. Uh, maybe in there a bit. Yeah. Just to give a bit of swooshy movement. And I think it just needs a little bit more in the tail, which has gone green. That should be more browny, shouldn't it? There we are. Just to make it stand out. I think a painting is very di different. If you're doing a, um, a botanical... Botanical? <laughs> if you were doing a kind of a... Um, a very accurate illustration for a book on fish or something, then obviously you'd have to do so much research. Uh, but this is this is just a bit of fun, a bit of painting. Now we lost some of these dots, so I'm going to make them a bit darker because these are very much part of the Atlantic salmon. And again, I think maybe just a little bit more up there. I'm not going to touch that anymore. There you are. How to draw and paint an Atlantic salmon. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Renner Drawing channel and keep coming back every week for lots more drawings. And in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.